Hi, my name is Bryce. Welcome back to VHS Play, where we are playing Final Fantasy VI and recording it all on VHS. Last time, hey, uh, we went and found ourselves a lock, um, which is important because we can get some cool stuff from that. Um, th things. <laughs> this is probably going to be a little bit of a mess of an episode, uh, just forewarning. Um, it's been uh, a day. Uh, it's been a week. Uh, it's been... Uh, it's sure is time. Time exists. Um... Anyhow, here's the deal. Okay, so let me just throw all the same people right back into my party. Um, because I want to harvest my, uh, these things. Espers. Words. Times. Stuff. Um, okay, you have Zone Seek because it's useful for leveling. You're a little close to a level, but not too close right now. Congratulations, Celeste. You, uh, are going to be the Keeper of Phoenix. Um, so, yeah, last time we got ourselves Phoenix, which, uh, is real good and has Life 2 and Life 3 and Cure 3 and Fire 3. Like, all really good spells. Um, so we're going to take that, uh, and get Celeste started on learning, you know, real big important magics. Um, Mog is going to stick around in the party, uh, so we'll hand him Palador again because, um, the party members use a jump attack as the summon, uh, is it fits with him being my dragoon character um well hey how much tiredness is actually in my voice <laughs> um uh so for my party we're going to take lock we're going to take celeste and we're going to take mom and we're going to leave the third spot or fourth third one two three yep third spot uh <laughs> Can't even say, hey, that's the third spot in the party because I'm pretty sure it goes one, two, three, four. Anyway, this is our group. But hey, good team. Right, I gave you sprint shoes for reasons. Those reasons were kind of silly, to be honest. Oh, geez. It is a time around here. Don't mind me. Um, cool, 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 cool. Where is the thing? It's not the sneak ring. I want to hand you the thief glove. There it is. There we go. Pile of gloves. Uh, so that we can throw... Right, I need to go buy a sniper for you. Um... Good lord. <laughs> Apologies for just, like, being out of it uh, today. Um, so I have plans, I have ideas, and uh, they're kind of all bad. Um, this is fine. Like, I've, I've had, like, a really clear idea of episode structure for, like, the last couple episodes, and then, like, now I'm just kind of in, um, in a hodgepodge of just, like, I'm not actually sure where to go. By the way, I never talked to this guy on screen. <sighs> You're gonna love this. Doomgaze can't restore his HP after battle. Just keep fighting him, and in time, you'll defeat him. It's really actually important information. Um, do we are going to grab one of these for lock um, because it's real good. And I think there is another wing edge out there in the world somewhere, uh, but until we find it, a sniper will do just fine. Uh, circlets are better than dark hoods by like, again, uh, dark hood is like one more defense. So ultimately dark hood, not great. Um, Honestly, I should probably just sell all Dark Hoods. And then they'll stop showing up in the Optimum window. Do and walk, you should start learning X-Zone. All right, there we go. We have a party. Uh, I guess we'll just leave the open spot there. Every once in a while, I just, like, catch myself randomly being like, Oh man, I love I love the sprite work in this game. Um, <laughs> dude, let me just double-check timestamps. Let me just go look over at recording lights to make sure everything's running. It's one of those days. Um, I, I, like, I very much almost uh, did not hit record on the VCR um, before starting, and uh, that... I have done that before, and it sucks. It sucks real bad. Um... <laughs> Oh, 
at the very least, it's not the time that I hit record on the VCR, but uh, had my mic hardware muted. Um, cool, 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 cool. So, what is the plan for today? Uh, it's kind of a hodgepodge. We do have... Part of the reason I'm keeping Mog in the party is because the Moogle charm. The other part is uh, he can talk to this guy over in Narsh and have him join a party. Um, this guy being, you know, we've heard mention of a Sasquatch. Um, and there's some other things I want to do up in Narsh. Uh, man, the, the glittering... <sighs> Such a good effect. The, like, the weird... Again, like, okay. We're just gonna go over the water here, like, when you're zoomed in and this close to it, like, the little, like, moving pixels with, like, the little white spots, it is just like, yeah, I get the point that that's water, but then, like, you get this, this big up here view and you start seeing all this stuff moving from far away, and it just, it looks like sparkling light on water, and it's fantastic. Oh, anyway, anyway. We're doing some Narsh stuff, uh, but first we're gonna make... Are we gonna make some poor decisions now? Let's make some poor decisions now. Um, before we go into Narsh, let's actually reform our party, uh, and... You know what? We'll pull in Terra. Uh, Terra, congratulations. Let's just give you something that is worth handing over for now. Let's double check that you're not actually going to level. Great. Perfect. Okay. Double check your equipment. Yep, yep. Cool. Everything is fine. It is now time to put Mog back into Dragoon mode, uh, because before we go into Narsh, there's actually something I want to do, and that is, I want to deal with Doomgaze, or Deathgaze, or whatever his name is. We'll find him soon enough, um, and we find him by just flying around in circles, basically. Um, this is a thing that uh, is mostly for my benefit, so that I can do things off-camera and not have to worry about Doomgaze showing up, um, because he can. <laughs> he is just somewhere out here in the world. Um, I don't know if there's actually any rhyme or reason to uh, where you can run into him, um, but he's just around, and it's just a random encounter that you can run into in the airship. There you go. Doomgaze. It's that guy who casts level 5 Doom. Ah, uh, beans. Terra is level 35. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's... Ah, uh, beans. Arrow hurts. Things are going swimmingly, as you can see. This is fine. Everything's fine. How are you? <laughs> and there he goes. Didn't do a whole lot of damage to him, but importantly, he doesn't uh, recover. Uh, speaking of recovery, let's, let's handle a bit of that, I guess. Oof, indeed. Um, Terra, you might be out. I love you, but you might be out on account to, of being level 35. That is, uh, that is just an unfortunate time, uh, for all of us. And we're just going to slowly walk downstairs and, uh, choose somebody else. Alright, and now let's go find Doomgaze again by flying around, randomly. I'm beginning to regret my decision to go after Doomgaze. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Oh, I don't know if I need to, like, land or if there's, like, any sort of triggers around this. I'm certainly beginning to wonder if there are. Let's see if that counts for uh, luring out Doomgaze. Um, <sighs> beans, man, beans. So, I wanted to get Locke for specific reasons. Um, one of the big ones is that I just wanted to have his stealing capabilities for this half of the game because it seems like there's a lot of cool stuff that you can steal. There we go. This is going to start off much better. Level 5 Doom, nobody gets hit. Uh, and we'll just have you go to... Where did it go? Behemoth. That does, in fact, hurt quite a bit. Man, he is really good at picking the person that is closest dying, and apparently we can't runic the arrow. That's rude. Um, sorry, Locke. And there's the escape. Let's head back to Nursh, <laughs> do a heal, and hopefully lure Doomgaze back out. This is, uh, this sure is a time. Man, I do, like, still just absolutely adore the flying in this game. Like, it is... You have... So many variations, like, what is this, like, nine variations of this sprite of, like, you've got your, your up, your upright, your up left, your left and right and straight forward, and your downward, down, and down right. Just an absolute joy. <laughs> Doomgaze, come on. Come on, mate. I'm on clock here. Anytime now. Okay, so he does seem to have a fairly consistent um, attack pattern. It looks like it. So, like, he shows up, opens with uh, opens with level 5 Doom, casts... Um, doom, casts level 5 Doom. He'll cast Ice 3 and then do... Uh, Either arrow or an attack. Which we can't do anything against arrow. Um, that might kill Mog. And he's going to do two hits and then escape. Or just one hit. You know what, uh, let's go ahead and just hand you the sprint shoes as well so that we can 
get in and out of our healing real fast. And we're back on the hunt. <laughs> uh, I regret deciding to do this as part of like a meat of an episode sort of time. Um, I imagine what this is going to turn into is this recording going long and me actually doing some editing for once. Um, because, boy howdy, this is a lot of dead air. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. It's funny because I'm in, you know, the sky and Doomgaze who casts Doom. I don't know if tilting upwards, like, it does seem like the last couple times I've, like, tilted upwards at a certain point is when Doomgaze is attacked. Tilting upward does give us a little bit more of that sky view, and like, yeah, it's just a repeating, like, cloud texture, but it's, it's nice. It's just nice. And these colors actually, like, the, the kind of fading sunset colors, they're, they're, I like them. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm doing gaze, and I'm going to run away. I do wonder if I could, like, cast stop or something. I know he is vulnerable to X-Zone. Um, however... This is one of those cases where using X-Zone will ruin your day. Did a little, little different thing. Good for you, Doomgaze. Okay, now I'm worried about it. That... didn't... <laughs> do quite as much as I had hoped. There we go. In classic fashion, no no experience or anything. But a piece of magicite popped out of Doomgaze's mouth. Received Bahamut. So, Bahamut, uh, we can learn Flare, which, uh, and also big increase in health bonuses. So this is like when we actually have a health bonus that's actually worth using sometimes. Um, worth using is always kind of a, a, a question mark of like, um, if we throw this on, we can leave it on for a couple of levels and that makes it to where like people will end up with max hit points at a certain point. Um, but more importantly, learning Flare uh, is is the jam here. Um, so that's exciting. Uh, also, hey, a good use of Phoenix there, I think. Um, <laughs> and most importantly for me, the skies are now safe. There are no more random encounters uh, <laughs> flying around. Um, so I don't have to worry about that happening, you know, uh, off camera. Um, and that's important to me. So, well, hey, that took like 20 minutes. 
I don't know. It took an amount of time, uh, and I'm not particularly happy about it. <laughs> uh, but I'm happy it's done. Wolves, I'm busy. Leave me alone. <laughs> So as you can see, Gao is actually like a really good character. Um, like that, that his rage attacks are really strong, uh, and that's really valuable. But also, um, it's it's the whole like you just don't control him thing is it's a deal. So, I mentioned during that fight that if you cast Egg Zone, like, you can just X Zone or break or uh, otherwise instantly kill um, Doomgaze. Um, however, if you do that, you do run into the problem that, um, that you don't get the Magicite out of it. Uh, the fight will just end, Doomgaze will be dead, and that Magicite will be gone forever. Um, so, it's, it's very much worth not doing that uh don't actually wait hold on do 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 i did not give you an expert okay great okay one more time with feeling get our party back together uh mog is going back into let's just not fight things mode. Um, where'd those print shoes go? So, why Narsh? Um, for one, there is that character here. Eh? What are you doing here? That doesn't matter, really. Nothing left, anyway. There's only one Moogle still around, and only a treasure hunter could pick that lock. A treasure hunter, you say? A treasure hunter, you say? So anyway, that was, uh... That was Lobos. I think... Was his name Lobos? Turns out the fall didn't kill him. <laughs> Um, however, we still don't get our uh, golden hairpin or whatever, which is just rude. Um, and here we get lock picking locks. And I forgot that Narsh has the bad vibes music. Um, and we'll see that a lot of these. A lot of these buildings are just locked and then empty. Um, if we hadn't done the, if we hadn't done our uh, event for getting Mog and the World of Balance, all of these chests would still be here, uh, and we'd be able to get that Gale hairpin. Um, Gale hairpin, golden hairpin, golden hairpin sounds right. Um, Even our friend Arvis, I think his name was. He's gone. We can get into the back of the mines. building after building just empty and nothing and like 
there's just nothing here. For the most part. There is, however, the weapon shop. Which, um... At the end of one of these episodes, there was like the... When I popped over to the Cult of Kefka Tower. Um, I had talked to a thief there. Um, he said that... And the old man in the weapon shop was looking for me. Oh, I've been waiting for you. I wanted to give you this. I ran a weapon shop for 70 years. The stone gives off an eerie aura. If I melted it and forged a sword, it'd be powerful. Well, make a stone into a sword. So, this is a... Uh, this is one of those how much are you willing to invest in the game sort of uh, choices. Um, Ragnarok as a materia. Gosh dang it. Why do I keep saying materia? I'm. It's an esper. As a magicite and an esper, words, not materia. What the heck? Brain. Um, <laughs> as an esper, Ragnarok teaches Ultima. Surprise. Ultima is the powerful, most powerful spell in the game. It's real dang good. As a sword, it does not do that. I, I think also, like, on level up, it doesn't have anything of note. I think it's just, like, the one thing it has is Ultima. Which, that's pretty cool. However, there's another way to learn Ultima. It's a long process... And I think we're going to, uh, at the very least, lay the groundwork seeds of that. Um, <laughs> ultimately, it's going to involve, hey, Bryce runs off to the vault for another 20 hours. Uh, <laughs> but um, don't worry about that. What we are going to do, though, is we are going to take the sword Ragnarok. Right. I'll stay here. This is my home. Alright. Ragnarok is one of those heavy swords that can only be used by certain people. Uh, it randomly casts Flare. Um, it has 255 battle power, which is max. Uh, and then plus lots to everything, and plus 30 evade and magic evade. So it's real good. It is real good. And in fact, uh, yeah, it's better than that enhancer for <laughs> look. Just let's focus on battle power down there. Battle power going from one fifty one to two fifty five. Um, there's another aspect of it. Uh, the Ragnarok, much like where is it? The stupid sword I never used. The Rune Edge, um, we never use because it absorbs, it uses mana to auto, like, automatically do criticals. Ragnarok does the same thing, but with 255 attack power and later in the game to where, uh, yeah, <laughs> mana is not quite so precious a resource. Um, I could also hand this to Locke who uh, is kind of my one of my main attackers. Um, but let's just let's just uh, look at that again. We've got Celeste up to a 79% block chance right now. And that's pretty good. Um, there's one more house all the way up here though. That door's not even locked. Nobody home. Where is this? There's another door somewhere in here. Ew, nobody in relics. This is my home. So the thing is, uh, Ragnarok is not even the best this sword can be. 
there is a trick. It's not this, but it's... We'll be... I'll not be coy about this. We're going to go to the Coliseum at some point and uh, quote-unquote upgrade the sword. This door. This is the door we haven't been through. In fact, I'm not sure if I ever went into this building. I most certainly did not. <clears throat> Take this. Cursed shield. If we could break its curse. Imagine its defensive power. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> that description is just... Curse Shield is cursed. Uh, everybody can use it. Great. Weak points. All of the above. Everything. Uh, minus seven to all stats. Um, also, we'll do one, one little combat. Everything goes down except for battle power. We're going to do one little combat with Mog having the shield. He still has the uh, Moogle charm. What's the matter, Mog? <laughs> So let's just go through some of the iconography we've got here. We have the swirling, uh, he's confused. Um, we've got the death countdown for uh, he's doomed. Um, he's bright red, which means he is berserked uh, and can only attack. So confused, attacking only, um, <laughs> doomed. And uh, also everything else. You can see he just took a little bit of damage there. Um, that's because he is also poisoned or sapped or uh, whatever is going to cause him to just slowly take damage and bleed out. I think Berserk also maybe raises attack power. Um, so yeah, it's a bad time. And also, uh, you know, taking double damage from every type of... <laughs> every type of damage uh except physical i guess um the curse shield is a bad time however you can break the curse breaking the curse involves doing 256 battles with that shield equipped you don't have to do it consecutively thank goodness we can in fact uh come over here and switch things out and you know do some stuff um Ultimately, like what it comes down to is you give somebody the ribbon, uh, because the ribbon blocks, um, protects from all SAS elements. The one thing it doesn't block from uh, is, is the Doom's status. So as long as you're not doing any prolonged engagements where that counter is going to go from, you know, 60 to zero, um, the weak, <laughs> the being weak to everything, honestly, I might be doing this with Celeste because she's got her Minerva armor. Um, which absorbs and blocks a bunch of things. I don't remember it. I think weakness might override things. So it's very much like a ho-hum, this is a bad time shield. And like I mentioned, it's basically going to be uh, me going into the Velt uh, and doing things for a while. Um, so, you know, one of those between episodes times... I'll be dealing with a bunch of stuff. Um, Sinker's Narsh Town. Uh, we got two important items. We have the Ragnarok, which at some point we'll be throwing, uh, we'll be throwing that at the Colosseum, which seems stupid, um, but is actually like there's a reason to do it. This is way back when at the start of the game. Uh, this is where we were looking for. An Esper. Isn't that neat?
Well then. We're actually going to switch Mog, uh, not Mog, Lock off of his, uh, his double attack rate thing, stuffs, words, two weapons. Uh, we'll just throw him back to sneak ring times. Um, wing edge, ice shield, circlet, and crystal mail, that's fine. The important thing is, everybody has, uh, an ice shield equipped. So there's that speedy little dragon there. That is one of our eight legendary dragons. And we're gonna fight him. He's just a little guy. So small. So we can, uh, if we wanted to thaw Mog out, we could use fire on him. Um, oh no, absolute zero ice damage. Too bad for you, we have ice shields. Uh, oh, well, there's a random cast of flare. <laughs> So, uh, I forgot to re-equip Mog for battle, um, so he's not doing jumps. Doesn't have anything, okay. little dragon. <laughs> Just a poor little guy. Ten magic points. Great, great. Uh, master new dance. And got the force shield. Six dragons left. So, hey, let's talk about shields. Um, the force shield. Yeah, let's actually pop over to here. Find it in the list. Curse shield. The force shield. Force shield. Protects against magic attacks. 50% uh, damage from all of the above. Anybody can use it. Uh, that's cool. Um, it also teaches shell at a times five rate, which that's neat. Uh, and let's just draw your attention down to that magic block chance there of plus 50%. Um, do, 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 do. Celeste needs 10 points to be immune. Now she already has a white cape, but if she put on a second one... Celeste now has perfect evade. Um, 128 is like the, the actual value there for the... It's like, it's not actually a percentage. It is, it is like the uh, block chance... Um, <clears throat> It's one of those things of, like, you only have so many characters to, you know, display these stats. It's not magic block percent, it's magic block chance, um, which the way the calculations work out is basically this number gets multiplied by 2 and then subtract 255. Uh, it's 250, like, when that number hits 128, you multiply that by 2, it's 256, it's more than that 255. Ultimately, things have a 0% chance to hit Celeste now. So, that's fun. <laughs> mm, you know what? Let's actually keep you on ice shield duty. Now, of course, like with the... Uh, the, the what's supposed to be the trade-off with the force shield is that it only... It only does. It only gives you magic defense. 
Um, whereas, like, the ice shields and whatnot, like, those do actually give you a physical defense. Um, which, interestingly, the ice shield gives you one more defense than the fire shield. Um, <laughs> but when, when you have perfect mischance, uh, then that doesn't matter. Not a bit. Oh, remember this cliff face from the very start of the game? And hey, there's this guy. He's still here. I forgot to equip Mog uh, for battle. Oh man, I forgot the uh... rip. Um, I forgot that we don't change music for this. Right, so if Celeste is dealing, uh, you know, 18 damage with a fight, we're gonna have to stick to magic. Getting bullied. The bullying continues. Seven magic points. You humans freed me from that prison of ice. You possess magicite. Who are you? I sense war and destruction. Would that stupid war possibly have lasted a thousand years? I can tell that you want to put a stop to the madness. Let's see if you are worthy. Received Magicite, Tritok. And also, the cliff fell. I feel really silly not putting Bahamut on anybody. That was dumb. <laughs> uh. Uh, I, I, I did it dumb. Oh, hey, you're at least learning X-Zone. Great. Uh, hey. Hey, bud. Have have a pity, Bahamut. Ice, fire, lightning, three-way attack. This is a, a neat Esper that has a neat summon, but unfortunately, the way... Um, apparently, the way uh, weaknesses and uh, vulnerabilities and all that stuff work, um, if an enemy is... Um, resists any of these three then it does half damage. Um, so, like, if there, if an enemy has defense against any of those of those damage types, then unfortunately, uh, we end up doing less damage with that summon, which is just kind of a bummer. Um, also, very importantly, magic power plus two at level up, so we have finally a second one of these. Uh, and then we also get our fire three, ice three, and bolt three. Excellent, we have these. Less excellent, it's a times one learn rate. That is, uh, that's not great. Whereas, we can at least learn Fire 3 at a times 3 learn rate off of Phoenix. Oh, anyway, we're not done yet. There's an opening in the cliff. Hop into it. Yeah. Just let the music play a little bit, because, boy howdy, this place is, a uh, is a little weird. Ah, beans. <laughs> 
So, the the whole gimmick here is that there's a bunch of uh, holes. I'm not going to open any, any treasure chests right now because, um, in short, I'm a dummy. Uh, I meant to go back and save after getting Tritok. Uh, Ultimately, there is a treasure chest here that is actually uh, really scary and kind of a problem. Um, how am I going to handle that? <laughs> it might be this one. It might be that one. I think it's that one down there. <clears throat> okay. Hey, we finally got a gauntlet! A gauntlet allows you to uh, use one weapon in two hands, which increases, I want to say it's like by 1.5? I think that's the amount that it raises attack power. Um, so it can actually be kind of decent. Um, beans. <laughs> Alright, so these these pitfalls that I keep falling into because I'm I'm a silly I'm, I'm I'm just Ooh You can see if you look very carefully, and this probably is not going to come across in the VHS footage, it is a very slightly different color, uh or pattern. Like the spot del uh, directly below me is a pitfall, and it's ever ever, ever so slightly darker. Um, it's much more noticeable here on these two. And that's how we get to here. This is a chest. I really want to leave this chest alone. Um, but also, payoff would be nice. Ultimately, it's a it's a rough fight, but also there's a, uh, a drop chance that I need to hit, or at the very least want to hit. Um, and I don't want to deal with, like, resetting <laughs> and that nonsense, so I think I might... How do I want to do this? Like, ultimately... You know what? Heck it. Uh, if need be, I will, like, redo things off-camera, and we will come here and do this fight, uh, and, and whatnot. Um... And if things go poorly, then you know what? They go poorly and we die. Yay! I forgot to equip Mog for battle. Great. And so, Pugs. Couldn't steal, uh, which is not surprising because um, these things are apparently like level 99. Uh, so, stealing is nigh impossible. Also, they really hurt. Ah, oh, beans. Ah, oh, beans. Um... So, the thing is, they can cast magic. I think they can only cast magic as a, uh... I think they can only cast magic as a counter. And yes, you will notice that these are, in fact, tonberries, which are called pugs here. Uh, 
they apparently have their own special little death animation. But they do the classic thing of like slowly, slowly walking towards you and then using knife to like instantly kill you or do a ton of damage. Uh, and then after they use knife, they go back. Um, if you keep attacking one, I think it's like every two hits, uh, it will step backwards. Um, as remembered, I have the battle speed turned way up uh, for various reasons. Um, I have no expectation that Locke has any chance to actually steal these things. If he could steal, that would be great. Um, but basically, part of the steal calculation is based off of level. Um, so these things are classified as level 99. Um, Locke is level 34? Hmm. Hopefully that doesn't trigger the, uh, the counter magic. Five magic points. We didn't get the item. Cool. So I will be coming back here and, uh, Basically, everything since the save point, I'm going to be doing on my own. Um, <laughs> so, there will be nothing new, no surprises. Uh, the main thing is... So, so why? Why why do I need to uh, do things specifically? Also, our magic is running kind of low. Woof. Just a pitfall over there, I do believe. It is unfortunate that I'm going to have to come back and do that. Anyway, um, so the the pugs or tonberries, as they you know would be called later. Um, I don't know how much of that is a. Um, I don't know how much of that is, like, weird early localization versus, uh, what... Uh, what Final Fantasy would eventually, like, determine. I don't know. Uh, this is, this is one of those things of, I don't know if that is a, a thing or not. Anyway. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> why that combat matters, uh, and why I need to go back and fight those, those that thing and get a drop and punch the mic apparently um they have both in their steel table and their drop table uh minerva which again minerva is this like really super good armor like compared to our slight like the next armor down is all of the stats lowered except for evade which doesn't matter and battle power which you know armored usually doesn't affect that so yeah it's real good it's real good and also it absorbs a bunch of different types of of, of damage and all that good stuff it's it's really good and i want to get a second one because um both terra and celeste can use it uh nobody else can what's with this carving looks like bone Something in that eye. Magicite? Yes. Gimme. Received Torato. Nobody's actually set up for fights properly. Except for Celeste. I was gonna do something. That's what it was. I was going to try to cast Osmos. See if it works.
So, as you can see, the Ice Shield uh, kind of trivializes this fight a lot. Nice. Um, hmm. Power 100 times up. Uh, Alright, this is... A little bit of a problem. He hits a lot harder now. Let's just slurp out some magic real quick. Sir, you're not supposed to be able to hit me. Apparently that counts as magic. Good job, Bog. You did it. Despite me forgetting to re-equip re you for battle. Oh, the silly, silly times. <clears throat> anyway, I got a whole ten guild pieces. Also, uh, let's check out our new Esper, Torado. Earth Elemental stuff. Hey, Earth Elemental stuff that we just have never had. Um, unfocused Earth Elemental attack, that means it can hit the party. Unfocused Near Fatal attack, means it can hit the party. Um, <laughs> so, those ones. Quake, we can cast Float on ourselves, and then we're immune. Uh, w Wind? White Wind? West Wind? I don't know. Uh, wind of some form. There's no defense against it aside from, like, really good magic block, so it would be worth, like, Celeste doing it on her own right now. Um, we'll get other people up to some decent magic block at some point, maybe. Um, and then Quarter, which, you know, leaves people with a quarter of their health, but also it is a, um, it's always a chance time using stuff like that. But, well, hey, we have a new uh, Esper that has new spells. I'm your boss, Koopo. You're gonna join us, Koopo. Admirer of bone carvings as strong as a gigas. A Sasquatch pal with muscle. <laughs> oh, I forgot that he gets his own, like, everybody else, they just, like, put them in a pose and hold it. They actually, like, let him do a flex at the end. Uh, that's, that's great. <laughs> so anyway, uh, ooh. Me, Amaro. Yes, boss. Me join you. Amaro? No slouching now. Oh, me wait for you in big airship. I, I have an open slot, my dude. You could have just joined us. So anyway, uh, cool. We got ourselves an Esper. We got a new friend. Uh, and we got... A quick escape. Speaking of quick escapes, uh, we'll make this even faster by just cap it, casting warp at this point. Um, and way well, hey, we are out of Narsh. And unfortunately, I will not be saving because I need to redo uh, these things and make sure I actually get a Minerva out of that uh, that pug chest. So, wow. <laughs> unfortunately, I will have to redo things off camera. Um, but I don't think I'll go much further than that. Like. The only other thing I might do is, like, run off to the belt for a while um, and start working on our cursed shield, because... Boy, howdy! It sure is cursed, and it's, real, it's a real bad time. But, uh, 
if we can break that curse, just think of the defensive power. Um, but also, like, I own the skies again. I can, I can, I can fly and not have to worry about Doom Gaze showing up, and that's delightful. Oh, so well, hey, here's the belt. I might spend some time there. We'll find out. It's fine. It's fine. Where are we going next time? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, actually, you know what? I will do one other thing. Um, and that is, we are going to hop into the Coliseum. Now, unfortunately, I don't think the Force shield will work. I think we need the flame shield instead. Actually, Minerva covers fire, doesn't it? Double check that. Do, 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 do. Minerva. No effect from fire. Great. Perfect. Cool. We're going to do something stupid. Uh, and that is going to the Coliseum without saving. Uh, and you know what? Let's might as well have ourselves a really ridiculously high block chance. Uh, it's not quite perfect defense, but it is pretty dang close to it. Um, very close to it, in fact. Actually, there's an end inside. <laughs> This is mostly just going to be showing this thing off. Uh, Power under Golden Knight? That's real expensive, but you know what? That doesn't matter because you're going to not save. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we're, we're just going to show off a little bit of the Coliseum since I can and because I want to and also because I would really just like to have this sword uh, because we're about to get uh, our super good endgame sword uh, that is real mean and hopefully I remembered which fight is coming up and how to prepare for it and all that stuff because we're betting the Ragnarok you know this most important sword uh that's very very important and we just got it and it cost us uh, you know an entire esper it's Diel uh, Didelis 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 And now we just wait. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is just like an auto battle situation. So Celeste is just going to sit there and hopefully just keep attacking. Maybe she'll cast a spell here and there and it's just going to be dumb. Um, I, we saw a little bit of this with the... Uh... Okay, that's cute. I don't think it works, but yeah. This is what more uh, advanced... Um... <laughs> So, so we, we showed off the Coliseum a little bit when, when we were picking up Shadow. Um, but ultimately, this is... Uh, you're already out of FP, my dude. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> There's really no interaction here. Like, the only thing you can do um, is you can hold down the triggers to run. Um... Which, like, why would you do that? What what that does, like, you can't escape. So there's no point in doing that to try to escape. But what that does do is um, it prevents the character from choosing attack. Or doing an attack, at the very least. Uh, because you can't attack while you are running. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is just going to take a while. Um, I have no idea how much health this guy has. Uh, <laughs> and also Celeste has like that some some in number chance to just use runic instead of fighting uh, and she doesn't always use useful spells ice might do something hooray that was almost like an attack um, but the thing is like Celeste is practically immune to things so she's a great pick for this fight and this is this is what advanced uh this is what advanced arena stuff looks like. The The Coliseum is very much just like you set up a build that counters specifically what you're about to fight. Um, and again, like the most important thing is that you should save beforehand because you might lose. 
This is going to take forever, isn't it? There we go. Uh, so we got our Illumina. <laughs> so that's cool. We we traded in uh, supposedly like this super important sword for a legendary sword. That's cool. Uh, still the same four people that can use it. Um, now instead of like a weird plus three to speed, uh, we have plus seven across all stats. And also magic block is up to fifty. Just flat out fifty. That's big. Uh, it also just says a legendary sword, but there is another effect that it can do. Um, also, look at that ridiculous magic block that is pointless at that at that point. Um, good thing we don't need these white capes actually anymore, uh, which means we can just do a hero ring and I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> There is a secret thing about the Illumina uh, that that they don't tell you. Um, so it's it's another one of those uh, swords that takes mana to automatically do criticals, which makes it a good fit for Celeste because she can she can runic to recover magic, um, and a lot of things cast magic, so it's actually like you know purposeful. Uh, let's go get our let's let's pick a fight uh, and see if we can pull out, like, draw out the uh, random chance time. Um, we'll just leave everybody else the same, because again, not saving, because I need to go back and uh, get the drop chance from those pugs. Deep eye the moos. Right. Things are weird. Have a nap. All right, just you. I guess you can just die. That works too. Nope, hits too hard. Can't show things off. Um. All right, we'll say I tried, uh, and there is like one other thing I want to do real quick because I just thought of it, and it's just like a, a little thing that I just want to show off. Um, we'll cover this sword in a second. So this is back on a sad little island with no grass, no like, you know, all four trees and, uh, oh wait, five trees, ooh ah. Um, and this is the sort of enemy that you can fight around here. They try to cast Pearl Wind, but they have no mana. They hit for garbage. Uh, they have, like, no health. As you can see, it just took two damage. Why did it take two damage? Because, um, that's what happens. Everything, like, all of the fights that you can get into on this island, um, it, you, it's, like, peepers are the large, like, they are most of your most of your enemies that you're going to run into and they like start they have like one health and they start with the uh the sap um i think it's called sap is the status effect where they just take damage over time so like any fight that you do here against these things you might get one turn in And then they just die. And <laughs> like that's that's this island is like this is an aspect of this island that I didn't really cover because I, I didn't go around and get in a lot of you know random battles. Um, couldn't steal. All right, they don't want to give it to me. Um, but yeah. I just there's there's a lot of aspects of this game that like I am I'm kind of rushing through a lot of things in the end here where it's just like I know you know I've played the game before so I know like where everybody is but like as a kid I have to stress that so much time was spent in just like searching for these characters 
And like, uh, my you know, my first time through, I didn't, um, I didn't wait for Shadow, so there was always just like, where is Shadow? Uh, where is he in this entire world? And like, searching the world over trying to find him, um, before realizing, either realizing eventually or like looking it up on ye old early internet days, which. Thank goodness for Game Facts for always being there, and also the random weird websites that everybody made their own, their own things of. Um, like, eventually you find out, no, you were supposed to wait for Shadow, and you just can't find him otherwise. Um, and... I don't know, like, we're, we're rushing through things, so you just don't get, like, the full effect of things like this depressing little island, this tiny nowhere in the middle of a giant empty sea and not being able to see if there is anything else out there. And there's no, like, it's just wasteland. There's a little bit of desert. The desert you can run into, um, I think it's Black Dragons, um, which can just zombify you and kill you instantly. Um, and that's just a game over. So it's like you have your choice of the already dying enemies that, that don't last in combat or these undead beasts that will, you know, bid you join them. Um, and that's all that's on this island. And again, like, there's the whole feeding Sid fish mini mini game that's not the right word for it but it's what I keep settling on as a word but like feeding Sid is such an important thing that like I cannot stress how much of an impact that was like as a kid just going back to the beach grabbing all of the fish coming back Sid not recovering not really changing status much at all um occasionally he says I'm feeling a little better and then sometimes he says I think I'm about to die and just like that loop for hours um I, I did find out that apparently like the reason Sid died immediately is that if you if you go out to the world map um there is a timer ticking down on Sid's life uh and for like every second you or you, if you spend time out on the world map then that timer just ticks down uh and I did step outside <laughs> and talk about things for a while on the world map and that is ultimately what got Sid killed. Um, it wasn't the fish. It was... <laughs> it was me doing a Let's Play. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like, I... I cannot stress enough. Like, we are kind of rushing through things, and, like, this, this little... Where is it? The... Like, the Star Mountains and this little secret spot that we can land in for the Phoenix Cave. It's... That was, like, a legitimate secret that took a while to find. And eventually it's just like, either you come to the realization of just like, huh, it looks like I could land there, and you try it, and then you discover there's a dungeon there. Or you get a hint from somewhere that is like a whole chain of hints of somebody said, somebody said to do this thing, and you do that thing, and you get a cryptic hint um, from somewhere else. And I don't know, I am, I'm very much rambling here, and like, sure wish I had thought to th talk about any of this while I was hunting Doom Gaze or anything else, but like, I just want to stress how different this game feels when you don't know it and you don't know what all that you're supposed to do and you don't know where you're going and you don't know where to find every character and you don't know you don't even know that as it turns out there are more than the characters that you met in the world of balance and like that's neat <laughs> That's really neat. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's wrap it up here. That's enough rambling for one day. Like, again, I am I am thoroughly enjoying this, and this is, like, easily one of my favorite games, and I'm realizing that, like, the last several games I've played on the channel are just like, hey, this is a rundown of my favorite games. Um, and 
Final Fantasy VI is up there. Like, it's, it's definitely still up there because I love these characters. I love the story. The, the music is, of course, a big, 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 big deal <laughs> and always has been for me. I don't know. I'm, I'm super duper rambling and I should stop talking and just absolutely actually wrap up this episode. So, <sighs> all in all, I love this game. I'm excited. We still have quite a bit to do. Um, we still have no sprint shoes equipped. Uh, <laughs> and importantly, we still have several characters to find. We also have uh, Umaro, who... Hooray, we have Amaro. Um, let's just put my party back together as it was. Just so I know what they have equipped. And let's throw those sprinches back on log. We're going to do... One last thing here. Once I find my sprint shoes. Where the heck are my sprint shoes? <laughs> uh, this has gone over long in the recording and I will have to like cut things down. It's Umaro. Ooh. That's it. That, that's all I got. It's just wanted to check in with him. Um, and that's it. That's all. <laughs> what did he have to say? Ooh, that's all. I should voice Umaro just like Grant Kirkhope doing Donkey Kong voice of Oh, banana. I don't like, Amaro doesn't have much to say. I think we've actually gone through, like, all of his lines, so it doesn't matter. And gosh dang, I'm just always getting lost in flying around in this map because flying just is fun in this game, and I love this game, and I'm so excited to get to all these things, and I'm sorry that I don't know how to end an episode. We're landing here. I'm going to step down two steps, and then we're signing off. Beep. Boop. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Bryce. This has been VHS Play. Have yourself a lovely evening. Uh...